In the outskirts of Tokyo stands Hakimitsu Private Academy, a reputable all-girls boarding school for intelligent and well-mannered young women. But as the new school year rolls around, one tradition is going out the window. For the first time in the school's long history, boys are being allowed to enroll. It is now the first day of the new school year, but only five boys are admitted to the school. These are our main protagonists, Kyoshi, the nerd Gakuto, the giant Andre, the hoodie boy Joe and the blonde, Shingo. The boys meet for the first time and are ecstatic to be in the school as they are surrounded by many attractive girls. However, they soon notice that all the female students intentionally ignore them. The boys are greatly troubled by this, but don't think too much of it and decide to go on with their day. A few moments later, they all head to their respective classes. During the lesson, Kiyoshi drops his sumo wrestling eraser and a girl named Chio sees it, much to his embarrassment. On seeing it, Chio reveals that she is also a sumo fan and starts a conversation with him after school. She invites Kiyoshi to watch a sumo match next week, and he happily accepts her offer. Later that evening, Kiyoshi returns to his dorm room. There, the other boys tell him about their plan to peek into the girls' bathroom. Using a two-way video system, the pervy students intend to dangle one cell phone over the bathroom window to peek at the showering girls. Kiyoshi is initially repulsed by the idea, especially because Chio will also be there. But the boys say it's far too early in the the plot to be simping, and they eventually coerce him into joining them. That night, they head to the school's roof and immediately implement their plan. However, it doesn't take long before things take a bad turn. As Kiyoshi lowers the phone into the girl's bathroom, his friends advise him to be careful, noting that the attached phone is his. The news stuns Kiyoshi, causing him to release his grip as the phone falls into the girl's bathroom. The boys panic in fear, and immediately send Kiyoshi to the bathroom to retrieve the phone. Luckily, he sees it in the changing area and is relieved to find nobody there. But a few seconds later, Chio unexpectedly enters the dressing room. Kiyoshi is taken aback when he spots her and immediately panics, thinking he's been caught. However, to his surprise, Chio, who isn't wearing her contacts, mistakes Kiyoshi for a girl and drags him into the bathroom. There, Chio discovers why most of the girls aren't talking to the guys. It turns out that a student association known as the Underground School Council, or the USC, had passed a law forbidding girls to interact with the five boys. Although the new chairman has allowed male students to enroll, the USC doesn't like the new decision and intends to keep things as they have always been. Meanwhile, back on the roof, the vice president of the USC, Maiko, and the secretary, Hana, discover the four pervy boys and realize what they are up to. The duo strips the boys and ties them up in the assembly hall for the entire school to see. The USC says that the girls can't talk to the boys, but they didn't say anything about looking at their peepees. Kiyoshi gets wind of this and leaves the bathroom as he hides outside the hall, waiting for his peers to get punished. A few minutes later, Mary, the president of the council, finds and drags him to the stage to join the rest of the boys. The next morning, the case is reported, and the boys are duly punished for their crimes. For their delinquent behavior, they receive an ultimatum from the USC to stay one month in the school prison or be expelled. Left with no better alternative, they accept imprisonment. On the first day of their sentence, they are warned against escaping from the prison, as that would add an extra month to their sentence. Furthermore, they will be permanently expelled if they attempt three or more prison breaks. The boys are petrified to hear this, and make a mental note to never escape from their cell. In the following weeks, the boys live in subpar conditions. They are tasked with hard labor in prison, and their punishment is overseen by Maiko, alongside the rest of the council executives. The next day, while working, Kiyoshi spots Chio leaning on a class window. He sees seizes the opportunity and talks to her as he apologizes for his bad behavior. Chio is pleased to hear his apology and accepts it. Later that day, she once again invites him to watch a sumo tournament and shows him a book containing details of the time and location of the event. Kiyoshi accepts her invitation, which delights Chio as she enthusiastically bids him goodbye. When she leaves, Kiyoshi immediately realizes that he is in a dilemma as they are not given any free time in prison. Despite this, he plans to go regardless of the cost and bring brainstorms feasible plans to successfully conduct a prison break. He eventually settles on one and decides to make a hole in the school wall as an escape route. Kiyoshi begins digging a hole in the wall and tries his best to be discreet. However, despite his best efforts, the nerdy Gakuto finds out about his plan. Kiyoshi assumes that Gakuto would snitch on him and instantly begins to panic. But on the contrary, Gakuto eases his fears and reveals that he will aid his escape plan. The nerd explains that the day of Kiyoshi 
Satoshi's rendezvous with Chio is also a special date for him, as a rare comic convention is scheduled to be held. That sounds way better than sumo. Hence, in return for his help, Gakuto coerces Kiyoshi to buy him a limited edition figurine set from the convention. Kiyoshi agrees to his request, prompting Gakuto to offer a more strategic plan. The nerd suggests that Kiyoshi escape on the scheduled day by dressing up as a girl and walking through the front gate. Kiyoshi buys the idea, and the duo craftily steals a girl's uniform from the school's laundry vehicle. Next, Gakuto intentionally provokes Mako and gets her to cut his hair as punishment. Using his severed hair, he makes a ponytail wig for Kiyoshi to aid his disguise. Finally, they also get an MP3 sound of a person farting to use as a cover when he leaves the prison. Eventually, the day of the breakout finally arrives. Kiyoshi enters the toilet, changes into the girl's uniform, and dons the wig. When he's done, he leaves the speaker with the pooping sound on the toilet seat and exits the school premises. This guy's not exactly Ferris Bueller, but uh, he'll do. As he leaves the school environment, he returns to his prison clothes and meets Chio at their designated venue to have a nice sumo date. As they enjoy each other's company, Chio suggests they take a photo together. Kiyoshi agrees, and the couple takes a nice selfie. Chio likes it and innocently sends it to her family's group chat. Meanwhile, back at the prison school, Maiko notices Kiyoshi's absence and inquires of his whereabouts. Frightened, Gakuto covers for him, explaining that he is in the toilet. Maiko buys the lie for a few minutes, but eventually goes to the toilet to see for herself. There, she hears the farting sound coming from a closed stall, and initially believes that Kiyoshi is there. However, after some time, she loses patience as he has been in the stall for hours and forcefully opens the door. Gakuto is scared to see this and concludes that they have been caught. However, when the door opens, Kiyoshi is surprisingly inside, much to Gakuto's relief. Ultimately, Kiyoshi leaves the stall as they all head outside. If he was actually in there for hours, he's got bigger problems. Right as they step out of the toilet, Mary stops them. It is then revealed that she is Chio's elder sister. Hence, she saw the picture of the couple at the sumo tournament from her family's group chat. She shows them the photo, which prompts Maiko to check Kiyoshi's bag. Inside, she finds a girl's uniform alongside Gakuto's wig and shows Mary, thus confirming that he indeed escaped from the prison. In light of this, the council announces that each of the boys' sentences is extended by an additional month. The boys are all livid with Kiyoshi for compounding their dilemma, especially Shingo, who aggressively punches him in the face. For the next few days, the boys shun Kiyoshi, and Shingo soon takes charge of the group. Despite their added sentence, Maiko and Mary are not satisfied with the boys' punishment and propose that they be expelled. To achieve this, they secretly establish an operation called DTO to have all the boys rusticated. They plot to make the boys complete three prison breaks, which would have them expelled, according to the school rules. The next day, Maiko calls Shingo to her office and offers him a variety of tasty foods. In exchange, she asks for valuable information about the boys. During her questioning, Shingo reveals that the giant, Andre, likes her. Maiko is pleased with his cooperation and rewards Shingo with a free pass out of the prison for a limited time. However, she adds that he must be back before the allocated period elapses or else it'll count as a prison break. Shingo thanks her for the kind offer and vows to return on time. The following morning, Maiko stands outside the prison fence and lures Andre towards her. The boys try to hold him back, but Andre falls for her trap and tears through the fence to reach his crush. Sadly, as soon as he passes the fence, Hana pops out and accuses him of attempting a prison break. Shortly after, Gakuto notices that the wires were already cut beforehand and instantly realizes that the girls planned the entire ordeal. Elsewhere, in the city, Shingo enjoys his free pass on a date with a girl named Anzu. Suddenly, he spots some boys bullying another kid, which reminds him of how he bullied Kiyoshi. He immediately feels guilty and confesses to Anzu about how he's been helping Mako. Anzu is moved by his confession and reveals that she was indeed sent by the council to stall him. Hearing this, Shingo realizes that there's just five minutes left until his free time elapses and instantly races to the school. Sadly, he misses the deadline by seconds and his late arrival is counted as yet another prison break, thus bringing their tally to a total of three and consequently resulting in expulsion. The boys are then brought before the school's chairman to answer for their crimes. A few moments later, Chio gets word of their imminent expulsion and barges into the chairman's office to defend them. She accuses the USC of setting the boys up, but Mary denies it, citing that she has no proof to support her claims. Due to the lack of evidence, the chairman agrees to expel the boys in three days after he signs the necessary paperwork. The boys are downcast by the declaration and ultimately return to their prison cell. There, Shingo reveals his betrayal to the group 
and asks for their forgiveness. The boys quickly reconcile with him and begin brainstorming ideas to prove that they were indeed set up. Right then, Shingo recalls seeing an email in the USC office with the code name DTO, which is the same name the USC used for their operation. He infers that the email may contain valuable information that could suffice as evidence. Gakuto approves of his idea and proposes a plan to break into the USC office by stealing the key from Maiko. The next day, the boys lure Maiko into arm wrestling with them. While she battles Kiyoshi, Gakuto knocks the table down and uses the opportunity to quietly steal her keys. The boys eventually reassemble the table and Maiko continues wrestling them while Gakuto heads to her office to find the mail. There, he discovers that the mail has been deleted and begins downloading an email restoration software to recover it. Back at the cell, Maiko successfully defeats all the boys and prepares to leave. She searches her jacket and realizes that her keys are lost. However, Gakuto arrives just in time and hands her the keys, pretending they had fallen to the floor. Thankfully, the boys are safe from Maiko and her jacked arms. But once she leaves, Gakuto reveals that he only installed the software and didn't have time to fully recover the mail. The boys are devastated to hear this and cry themselves to sleep that night. However, they do not lose hope and remain determined to prove their innocence and halt their expulsion. The next day, during lunch, Kiyoshi gets a message from Chio, hidden in his food. Seeing this, the boys realize that they can get help from outside. So, Gakuto starts making a plan that utilizes this advantage. They send a message to Chio, asking her to wait outside the prison entrance at 8pm. However, they soon discover that they'd need to unlock the door to let her in. That day, Hana takes over guarding duties from Maiko, much to Kiyoshi's delight. It turns out that Hana likes Kiyoshi, and he comes up with a ploy to use her emotions to his advantage. Just before the agreed time, Chio arrives at the prison's entrance and waits to be let in. Meanwhile, Hana takes Kiyoshi to a room and kisses him. Seizing the opportunity, Kiyoshi successfully unlocks the prison door to let Chio in. After the kiss, Hana returns Kiyoshi to the cell while Chio sneaks in. When Kiyoshi returns to the prison cell, he quietly informs Gakuto that the first phase was successful. Hearing this, Gakuto and the hoodie boy, Joe, instantly ask permission to go to the toilet. Hana allows them to go and ultimately locks up the prison before retiring for the night. Back in the USC office, Mary and Maiko are suspicious that the boys are up to something, so they leave their office to check in on them in their prison cell. However, they are relieved to find all the boys fast asleep. Mary starts gloating in victory, with the guarantee that the boys will be expelled tomorrow. The next morning, the boys are finally taken to the chairman to be expelled. The chairman brings out the expulsion papers as Mary brags about winning. However, Kiyoshi suddenly faces her and smirks, stating that she has lost. Mary brushes his words off and assumes he's pulling a last minute bluff, but Kiyoshi remains unmoved. Right then, Maiko notices that two of the boys are covering their faces and senses that something is amiss. When she uncovers them, she discovers that Gakuto is actually Joe in disguise, while Joe is in fact a disguised Chio. The USC is taken aback by the revelation and demands an explanation. Finally, Kiyoshi shares what really transpired last night. Apparently, after Chio sneaked into the prison, she went straight to the toilet. At the same time, Gakuto and the hoodie boy Joe, who were given a signal by Kiyoshi, asked permission to go to the same toilet. There, the trio exchanged clothes. Chio is disguised as Joe, while Joe is disguised as Gakuto. When they were taken back to the prison cell, the real Gakuto had all night to look for an opportunity to enter the USC office. This opportunity came when Maiko and Mary went to check the boy's prison cell. He entered the USC office and successfully retrieved the deleted DTO emails. After Kiyoshi's revelation, the real Gakuto enters the office. He brings out a flash drive containing the files and hands it to the chairman. Using his computer, the school official accesses the drive and confirms that the boy's accusations are indeed true. He sees all the things that the USC had been doing to the boys, including the brutality and the setups. Hence, he retracts his declaration to expel them and acquits them of all charges as they have fully served their initial sentence. The boys are overjoyed by the news and return to the normal school where they join the rest of the students. As the USC is now defeated, the boys can enjoy their school lives with the girls. Kiyoshi is fed by Chio in the cafeteria, while the rest of the boys are showered with attention by the rest of the girls. Back at the chairman's office, the USC is faced with the penalty of their actions. Just like the boys, the three USC members are imprisoned and made to serve a sentence. The girls are paraded in front of the entire school and eventually enter their cell as Kiyoshi fiercely locks eyes with Mary. 
Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.